What's going on ladies and gentlemen, it's Scott here and welcome back to Fudge Muppet. Today we have something a little different for you guys. We have a brand new Fallout 4 build to share with you, but this one has a twist. We thought it would be fun to design our latest build around a very cool member of the Fallout community. One who we think is a sensational dude. And to put the cherry on the cake, his outfit can actually be found in the wasteland. This is a tribute to none other than Oxhorn, and we've called it The Beard. Looking dapper in his ballistic weaved suspenders and slacks, topped off with a suave bowler's hat, the beard enters the Commonwealth as a bastion of style, rocking ridiculously high endurance and dealing with raiders and death claws alike with ease. Now, while this build is inspired by Oxhorn, we don't know everything about him and can't say it's 100% accurate. Consider it loosely based on his online persona, although we had to adjust it a bit to fit the parts of the backstory given to you in Fallout 4. He's a really interesting member of the community, but we can't confirm he was actually there the day the bombs fell, can we? The beard is charismatic, bringing the best out of his companions, and with an array of decked out rifles. He's the kind of character that has equal success in and out of combat. Don't forget, before we begin, we have timestamps that can be found just below in the description for your video navigation needs. But with that said, let's get things started off with the Beard's backstory. The Beard was born in the suburbs of Boston and grew up with a passion for comic books and computers. His mother was a librarian and his father a programmer. This was perfect for the young Beard who was allowed to use his father's computer for a few hours every day after finishing his homework. And when his mother returns from working at the Boston Public Library, she would often bring him home a kid's history book or a graphic novel, or sometimes even the newest comic from Hubris Comics. The Beard was always intellectually gifted and it wasn't long before he was reading the same history books adults did. His father used his computer skills to help program Robco bots, although at home spent much of his time on his computer. The Beard often watched over his dad's shoulder, although his father wasn't actually giving him lessons or trying to teach him such complex stuff. Nevertheless, the Beard picked up computer skills fast and taught himself to make very basic games and pixel animations, which he loaded onto tapes. His father was baffled by his son's abilities, having never shown the Beard how to apply any of his programming skills into such creations. The Beard persisted with this and eventually Eventually, on his 16th birthday, his creative pursuits developed even further. His parents had bought him a camera. This opened the door to all kinds of new possibilities, and the beard began making animations by taking thousands of photos, adjusting models ever so slightly between frames. While he enjoyed the technical aspects of filmmaking and programming, he found it could get repetitive, and it didn't always inspire his creativity. And when that happened, he would write. An imagination fueled by shelves upon shelves of books and comics gave him all the firepower to write write stories packed full of wondrous locations and fascinating characters. As his skills developed, so did his access to better technology. He focused on creative writing and filmmaking studies throughout his education, and by the time he'd finished university, he was making short films with a kind of equipment usually reserved for small film studios. He was working on a fantasy short film about an anthropomorphic ox with superhuman strength when he somehow stumbled upon the love of his life. He had the perfect voice in mind for his female lead, and during the auditions one amateur actress stole his heart. Her name was Nora. His film sold well, but it wasn't long before The Beard and Nora were settling down and trying to gain control over their finances. Nora had dreamed of becoming a lawyer and her tuition fees were more expensive than either of them could imagine. However, The Beard refused to let her quit. He worked tirelessly for the years to come, writing multiple novels and several short films to fund her education, aided by nothing more than his own determination, a bottle of good scotch and a case of fine Cuban cigars. And despite all odds, they got their mortgage and their bills under control. The Beard's hard work didn't go unnoticed either. He was approached by representatives from the West Coast with big plans for him, and he eventually signed a promising contract with the US Armed Forces to act as the filmmaker for their recruitment division. The Beard made short films for years depicting the brave and selfless soldiers who gave their lives for good old America, and with his help the US Army saw a significant rise in enlistments. Seeking a new challenge and an opportunity to work on his magnum opus, The Beard shocked everyone by insisting that he serve on the front lines in Alaska, where the US forces had their horns locked with the Chinese invaders. The charismatic filmmaker was shipped off to Anchorage and joined the men in the thick of the war. The Beard was terrified that he might have sentenced himself to an early death but he never let it show. 
He had big plans for his next novel, depicting the gritty reality of the Sino-American War that took its toll on the humble, frostbitten men stationed in the trenches. When he arrived, he was taught to fire a laser rifle and various other short and long-range rifles. It was ironic to him. For years he had worked in the military, but he had never fired a gun in his life. The atmosphere in this camp was grey and dreary as the Alaskan winter sky, and the men showed none of the gallant vigour he had so gladly displayed in his recruitment films. On one particularly horrid rainy night, the Beard called the men of his battalion over to the fire, and when they sat, he opened his thick fur-lined coat to reveal a full unopened bottle of expensive scotch. In the firelight, it glowed like some magic elixir that would take away the woes of war. The men drank deep and the Beard told stories, pausing only long enough between sentences to take a long puff of his cigar. When he opened his mouth again, out popped a glorious smoke ring, and the men laughed. It was the first time he'd seen so much smile from them before. The Beard remained in Anchorage for six months, engaging in three battles. He had taken lives and escaped with his own, but at the end of the six months, he was shipped back to Boston, where his wife greeted him with open arms. Then, they decided to raise a family. And while Nora's belly swelled from her pregnancy, the Beard toiled away in his study, working on his masterpiece that he was certain would carry his unborn child comfortably through life. In October 2077, the beard was full of excitement. His son Sean was healthy and happy, his wife was enjoying taking care of him, and the beard's book was coming along nicely. He planned to attend the veterans reunion in Concord where he could get some interviews with the surviving soldiers, but those plans, along with all of his work, burned and turned to ashes on October 23rd when the bombs fell upon Boston and the beard and his family retreated to the so-called safety of Vault 111. After escaping the vault, the beard will be struck by grief. All of his hard work to make the best life for his family was gone and he feels as though he has failed them. He couldn't save his wife and he couldn't protect his son. Even his magnum opus, years of work, had decomposed in the remains of his family home. He will pull himself together and vow to recover Sean and give him a positive childhood, despite the state of the Commonwealth. Upon finding the Minutemen, he will see them as a beacon of hope for the goodness of humanity and will join them in their efforts to set up a sustainable system of settlements. He will also use the railroad to help him find his son, obtaining the ballistic weave in the process. He has nothing against the railroad and finds them endearing, so he will never outright betray them, but he believes the Minutemen to be the most noble cause for the Commonwealth. With the Minutemen, he will build tons of settlements and will dispose of the raiders infesting Nuka World. He will not join the Brotherhood of Steel as he disapproves of their structure, seeming more like a dictatorship than a democracy with the wrong priorities. He also isn't fond of the Institute's lack of morality. As a high intelligence character, he sees the utility and the potential good they can do in practical terms for the Commonwealth, but their clinical approach with little to no regard for acting ethically is troubling to the Beard, and he will therefore be quite disappointed in Sean, even if he is pleased to see him initially alive and well. It will pain him greatly to destroy the Institute, but he sees no alternative. He will see the bigger picture and be very ambitious, aiming to unite the Commonwealth and make it a safer and more pleasant place to live under the leadership of the Minutemen. With his help, he will return them to prosperity. He also likes to keep it classy with his attire, especially once reinforced with ballistic weave technology, but he isn't going to look down his nose at those who dress in simpler styles. Above all else, he's a kind-hearted family man and has a profound respect for family values, looking out for his kin. The loss of his wife and son will affect him greatly, but he will treat the Commonwealth as his new family, providing for the settlers who enter his community with energy, food and water, much in the same vein as the way he used to provide for Nora. And while saving the Commonwealth from descending into total irreversible chaos is quite time-consuming work, the Beard will always make time to sit back for an occasional drink and a hard-earned cigar. At the start of the game, the Beard's special stats will be 2 Strength, 1 Perception, 5 Endurance, 10 Charisma, 8 Intelligence, 1 Agility, 1 Luck. The special book in Sean's old room will go into Luck so that we can gain access to the Scrounger perk as soon as possible. Take a quick look at these stats. Charisma is, of course, the Beard's strongest suit. He can bring a smile to everyone's face, even homesick men with frozen fingers fighting a ceaseless war in Alaska. And considering his creative talents, he's quite the entertainer. Charisma will play a significant role in this suave gents playstyle. Intelligence is the other key ingredient for the Beard. Everyone knows that a man who can scratch the Beard on his chin when 
lost in thought is instantly twice as intelligent. So with a beard of this magnitude, 8 intelligence is the least we could have. Let's not forget his background in programming. Hacking terminals, using medicine, tinkering with guns, commanding robots and building settlements will all be learnable to the beard. Now that we know the beard's backstory, quest choices and his start game special stats, let's delve into the specifics with his essential perks. Usually we'd stick to the priority perks, but all of these are critically important to the beard. So starting off with strength, you'll want to take all ranks of the armor perk. In the pre-war world, knowing a skilled tailor and having a good eye for fashion is pretty much all you need, but here in the wasteland, there's a bit more to consider. With all ranks of armorer, the beard will have access to all ranks of armor modification to make his stylish apparel equally practical. Next up, we have perception, and while the beard doesn't claim to be the greatest marksman in the Commonwealth, he was fortunate enough to learn to shoot from America's finest. The only perk to get from this skill tree is rifleman, and with all ranks of this perk, non-automatic weapons will be twice as powerful. They'll also ignore 30% of the target's armor and have a chance to cripple a limb. Endurance is next, and while it starts off a pretty average 5 points, we'll be dropping 4 perk points into the base stat, bringing it up to 9 before the bobblehead. As he adjusts to life in the wasteland and finds a new family to protect and provide for, our bearded friend will learn to take whatever Boston throws at him. From the endurance skill tree, the only perk to get is the adamantium skeleton. With all ranks of this, you will be immune to limb damage. This is where things get interesting for the beard. Charisma. Cap Collector is one of the first on the list, and with this, buying and selling prices will be much better, and you'll be able to invest 500 caps in a vendor to permanently increase their available caps when bartering. One of the side effects of this perk, which is probably the best part for the beard, is that the perk grants access to some of the larger stores you can build in settlements with the Local Leader perk. And with that said, Local Leader is next. Take both ranks of this perk to create supply lines between your settlements, and to be able to build stores and workstations at workshop settlements. Next, we have Party Boy. This perk removes the addiction from alcohol and makes it twice as effective. You'll also gain 3 points of luck while operating under the influence for each type of alcohol you drink. This perk is great for role playing, but it also has great benefits for the beard. Strength is granted by some alcoholic beverages and this can help with carry capacity when you're hauling a lot of loot. Also you can bash harder with your guns too. The 3 or more points of luck will temporarily give you great critical hit gathering capabilities and potential bonuses to endurance make you pretty much impossible to kill with all that liquid liquid courage swirling around in your stomach. Lastly, two ranks of inspiration will allow you to utilize your charisma in battle. With this, your companion will deal more damage while taking less, and friendly fire will be stopped between the two of you. From the intelligence stat line, we have two ranks of medic. This means stim packs will heal 60% of lost health, while right away will remove 60% of your acquired radiation. Take all ranks of gun nut and three ranks of science to lay claim to all of the gun and high tech mods you could need for your arsenal, and then take all ranks of scrapper so that you can salvage more from scrapping, and so that scrapping will provide you with much more valuable and rarer components. These last three perks really help with settlement building. Then we have Hacker, and three ranks will allow you to hack master level terminals. And two ranks of Robotics Expert means you can hack into unsuspecting robots, shutting them down, self-destructing them, or even inciting them to attack. Keep in mind that with the Robotics Expert and the Automatron DLC, you can build robots to stay and protect your settlements while you're away adventuring and questing. Our last stat of note is Luck, and and whilst this begins at 1, the special book and bobblehead will bring this to 3. With the luck stat, we can take 3 ranks of fortune finder and scrounger. This will give you much better results when looting caps and ammunition from containers. So outside of combat, there will be a strong emphasis on building well defended settlements. While in battle, you can use alcohol to boost your stats before unleashing on your enemies with your laser musket, 50 cal sniper, and your lever action rifle. Of course, adjust for distance. If you're at a long range, use the 50 cal sniper. If you're up nice and close, plant them with a laser musket shot. With a ballistic weave on your outfit, you'll look damn good in the process as well. At the end of the game, including the special book, all bobbleheads, and perk point investments, but excluding gear, the beard special stats will be 3 strength, 2 perception, 10 endurance, 11 charisma, 9 intelligence, 2 agility, and 3 luck. The beard's endurance will actually reach 13 once you have on your outfit, and we'll get into that in just a second. As for the gear, grab a laser musket and upgrade it fully. It uses fusion cells, which helps to diversify the type of ammo you use. This is a good weapon to focus on early, because not only does it look really cool and fit the beard's aesthetic, but you can also get your hands on one pretty much immediately in the first Minuteman quest. Your next weapon will be a fully upgraded 50 cal sniper rifle with a long scope for those long distance kills. Vats won't be used very often due to the beard's lack of vats capabilities, so having a great scope is crucial. Whip this bad boy out when you're a long distance away from your targets. 
Finally, grab a lever action rifle fully upgraded with a reflex sight. This gives off some Oxhorn vibes as we've seen him use similar guns plenty of times in his New Vegas videos. He strikes me as the kind of fellow who would appreciate such a weapon. As with the sniper, this gun also runs off a different ammo type so you won't need to worry if one of your guns happens to run low on ammo. As for the aesthetic, there's only one acceptable option here and that's the suspenders and slacks. Give this the ballistic weave for high damage and energy resistance. This outfit also offers plus two to endurance to make the build extra beefy. On top, wear a bowler hat. This can't be ballistic weaved, but does add another plus one to endurance. So combined with a high stat, the suspenders and adamantium skeleton, losing health shouldn't trouble you very much. The beard is missile proof. Some extras to carry around with you include an assortment of alcoholic beverages. Whiskey and bourbon work well for the endurance increase and both will increase your strength for weapon bashing. Most importantly, alcohol will be used for role playing, but with a party boy perk, you can totally use it to refine your playstyle. With whiskey and bourbon and party boy, you'll get plus four strength from the whiskey and plus two strength and plus two endurance from the bourbon. You'll lose out on some of your intelligence though, so just make sure you've sobered up enough before turning in your quests. Use alcohol to complement your playstyle rather than as an essential element. And don't forget to collect cigars in your travels too. You gotta smoke up every now and then. There are plenty of options for the companions and their effectiveness will be compounded by the inspirational perk. The beard is charismatic and most of all, he is a provider and a protector. So he will take it upon himself to help his companions improve and clean up their problems. Therefore, companion quests are definitely worth the time. McCready, Kate, Piper, Old Longfellow, there are lots of stories to explore and friends to meet in the Commonwealth and the beard loves a good story. Of course, while he is open and accepting, companions like Gage and X688 are off the table. Their views are a bit too different to the beard, but at the end of the day, you can pretty much decide which companions you want to help. Building robots and taking them with you is also an option if you prefer, thanks to the robotics expert perk. But if you're after engaging conversation and human interaction, stick to the real companions. The beard will create a bunch of settlements with the Minutemen and he will ensure that they thrive and prosper, kitting out the settlers with better gear, building sustainable farms and formidable defense systems. He will use settlements to create a better commonwealth for those who seek to live in harmony with it. You can spend a lot of time on the settlement side of things, but you're obviously not restricted to it and you can adopt more of an adventuring focus if that's more of your style. As mentioned earlier, you can also build robots to defend those settlements from external threats, but food, water and shelter are the crucial necessities. Thanks so much for watching guys. Subscribe if you're new to the channel and give the video a like if you enjoyed it. This has been a something little different, our brand new Fallout 4 build inspired by Oxhorn, the beard. Don't forget that timestamps can be found in the description along with links to our social media accounts, our Twitch channel and our Patreon, so feel free to come chat with us and show us your support there. Go check out Oxhorn's channel, I've been Scott and I will see you next time.